I come from a community of farmers and fishermen. People were fishing to survive. As a child growing up, there was no fish being brought from outside the community. Today, there is not a single person in our community who you can describe as a professional fisherman because there is no fish to depend on. This share of paradise, the delta of my birth, reels from an immeasurable wound. Barrels of alchemical droughts flow from this hurt to the unquestioning world that lights up its life in a blind trust. The inheritance I sat on for centuries now crushes my body and soul. We have enough wealth. How many thousand barrels of oil are this siphoning from our land every day? And how much is coming to us? Nothing. The oil companies themselves are not willing to come and sit down. At this moment, they make fantastic profit that nobody, nobody knows about. They produce the oil, they report to government, they sell the oil, and government sits down in Abuja only to receive the profit. A lot of the money that is being generated from the oil revenue is being shared by people who are in power and their cohorts. At the moment, there is too much of official corruption that is going on. If the government cannot even address matters as basic as water to drink, sanitation, public education, then of course it's difficult. No water, no light, no road. People are dying every day because of oil exploration. If the Niger Delta people have been denied their rights to property, no Niger Delta person can lay claim that that piece of land given to him by his ancestors is his as of right. Because the government had put in place a decree that says that property, that land, that forest, that river no longer belongs to the person because they want to take control of oil and gas. Saru had mobilized his people to say no to pollution, to say no to degradation, to say no to injustice. It is that shout of no, that resistance, that the federal government will not want to tolerate. And that was why they hanged him.
things have gotten worse since Sarawa was murdered. The law doesn't say that because you have the permission of the federal government to exploit for oil, it still does not permit you to pollute my environment. If Shell, Ajib, Elf, Chevron are allowed to be businesses and we hold them accountable for any ecological violence or moral interruption, the communities can go to court and get justice. Right now, they cannot. The oil economy is killing almost every other sector that you find in the Niger Delta. We have witnessed a clear disruption of a sense of community as we had in our villages and town. Communities have been basically robbed of their means of survival. We are tired of this situation. One looking for a job, no job, you go out for fishing, don't get fish. An angry man is an angry man. So any moment from now, a dangerous thing can happen. They can shut down oil production in Nigeria. The effect of that on the federal government will be great. The government will collapse. Niger Deltans have been talking for years, but when men carried its own weapon, the government is shaking everywhere. So that means the government respects violence, not dialogue. We have a very repressive government. We have a military that is out to kill. Such a military will go to any length in wiping out communities that occupy platform and they have it closed down. We are the Niger Delta soldiers. We are angry that our brother has been killed. The average Niger Delta is not afraid of death. And if he must die, he must die a hero, not a coward. There are different phases of struggle. We are still using dialogue. Let us see if these people will look at things in our view. But if they do not, everybody, even the women, not only the men, even the women will carry weapon. And when it starts, until we have our freedom, we won't stop.